At four foot six and only 68 pounds, 11 year old Robert Sandefir lived a life plagued with violence and tragedy. His extremely short life should be a cautionary tale, but patterns of destruction that led to his death still exist today. A young life lost on the streets of Chicago is still sadly nothing new. So who was Yummy, whose story moved Tupac so much so that he took on a crowd of gang members at one of his concerts one night? With no thought for his own safety, decades later, the story still resonates in Chicago and at the time received national attention. Robert Sandefir was raised by his grandmother. His mother was involved in prostitution and his father was a drug felon. He was nicknamed Yummy because of his love for sweets. His aunt said he loved cookies and his favorite were chocolate chip. He grew up in the Roseland neighborhood, located on the south side of Chicago. In the last few months of his life, he ended up with 23 felonies and he was in police custody around 30 times. Yummy ended up joining the Black Disciples, as is typical with young people who get recruited by gangs he gained a sense of belonging and validation. A psychological report written by an examiner at a state-run shelter wrote, Robert is a child growing up without any encouragement and support. He is lonely and feels poorly about himself. He has a sense of failure that has infiltrated almost every aspect of his inner self. New members often see it as joining a new family. And if they've grown up without a father, they're more likely to be drawn to the male-dominated environment, where they are offered protection, provision of material possessions they could only dream of, and undeniable status on the streets. But these kids are often used by their older recruiters who simply want to evade the law and avoid doing prison time and possibly life sentences that they assume would be easier for a kid to avoid even if they get caught. And people are less likely to suspect a child if they are approached. So they use these kids as trigger men too. Yummy, who wore a gang tattoo on his forearm, was recruited by the Black Disciples to shoot a member of a rival gang, the Gangster Disciples. He carried out his assignment that evening and wounded two enemy teenagers. Just blocks from his home, on West 107th place. During the attack, a stray bullet killed an innocent bystander named Siobhan Dean. She was just 14. She was just hanging out on her street right near her house. In the documentary, The Yummy Sandefir Story, Siobhan's aunt said that she was a very cheerful young lady and just beginning to start getting involved in doing hair. She liked going to church and hanging out with her cousins. She worked in a beauty shop in her spare time. Sadly, on that day, her aunt heard two gunshots and their kids came running in and told them that somebody had been shot. She ran to help and realized that it was her niece. Her brother discovered his daughter lying on the ground. The police arrived and she was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital. Robert went into hiding for three days, he eventually returned to the neighborhood looking for his grandmother. It is believed that he was considering turning himself in, something that the Black Disciples would not allow at all costs. They believed he would snitch under police interrogation. They recruited Craig Hadaway, a fellow gang member, to stop that from happening. He brought along his 14-year-old brother, Derek. While Yummy was waiting on the steps of the neighbor, the brothers approached him and promised him that they would help get him away to safety. He went off with them. When the neighbor came back out, Yummy was gone. Just a mile into the trip, Craig told Yummy to get out of the car with him and they walked to an alleyway while Derek stayed behind. Craig walked Yummy to a pedestrian alleyway beneath the train tracks at the eastern boundary of the neighborhood. Derek would later go on to say, 
that he heard three gunshots. Craig scrambled back into the car and they drove off. Yummy was found at 12.22 a.m. on September the 1st. His autopsy revealed 49 scars. The chief medical examiner said that some were likely the result of normal falls and mishaps of youth, but others just as likely evidence of the abuse he suffered at an early age. The story didn't receive national attention at first until this point. One poignant headline simply said, so young to kill, so young to die. Not only did it receive national attention, Yummy's image ended up on the front cover of Time magazine. The whole country became aware of the story and it touched people to realise that two young lives were lost due to gang violence and that also Yummy's killers were also two young boys who in a way faced losing their lives too as they were pursued by police. In fact, many in the neighbourhood couldn't believe that the brothers were capable of killing a young boy and even insisted that they were innocent. But eventually, they were caught and tried as adults. They both ended up with life sentences. The story got the attention of Tupac Shakur, who is believed to have been deeply moved by the death of Yummy and Siobhan Dean, to the point where one night at a concert with the Outlaws, Tupac noticed that many in the crowd were throwing up gang signs. He soon came to realise that there were many Black Disciple gang members enjoying his concert. On Vlad TV, the Outlaws recalled this night and said that Tupac basically threatened the crowd and said, if you kill any more kids, you're going to have to answer to me. Well, not in those words, but something to that effect. I mean, Pac had read that article, that article on the way to the, on the, way to the show. Um, at that time, I think Yummy Sandifer's picture, that same picture you seen in that interview, was on the cover of Time magazine, and they had the, the, the title was Child Predator or something like that. And you know, um, Pac was a very sensitive dude, especially when it comes to his people, you know what I mean? And you know, um, he was livid. He was disgusted by the whole story. He didn't understand it. He didn't understand why a kid had to be, you know, murdered. It didn't make sense to him. You know, it ended up in his music. If you listen to Me Against the World, Yummy Sandifer's name is mentioned, you know, throughout the, throughout the project. And it's something that stuck with him. And so we go to do, we go to do the show, and uh, this dude, he, he lost it. He basically lost it. On stage? On stage. What did he, he lost say? Lost it on the gang members, because there was a lot of dudes in the crowd you know, throwing up gang signs. The gangsters love to come to Pac shows, you know. And there was certain songs that he would do that, that would just set them over the edge. So they throwing up their gang signs, but Pac is not looking at it like they saluting him. They really was just, you know, enjoying the music, loving the fact that he up there and this is how they celebrate. They start throwing up their hood and throwing up their signs. But Pac is thinking about Yummy Sandifer and he lost it and basically, you know, threatening a crowd full of gangsters. Like, yo, y'all keep killing kids. I'll murder all you motherfuckers. Mm. Keep it clean, man. <laughs> well, you know, I want to quote the man right, man. He ain't say MFs. You know what I mean? <laughs> that man, you know what I mean? He said wow. what he said, and, and they lost it. You know, they lost it on us, man. We start wow. fighting with the crowd. We throwing bottles at them. They throwing bottles at us. They trying to get on stage. You know, um, it, it, it turned into a real ugly situation. When people ask the question of how a young boy can get involved in a gang and end up losing his life in the way Yummy did, one common theme is hardship. Living in the hood and not being able to find work and therefore people doing what they have to do to survive. In 2014, Craig and Derek were interviewed for the first time. Craig was 36 and his brother would have been 34. Craig admitted, that when he was asked to kill Yummy, he was under no uncertain terms that it was his life or Yummy's. It was a matter of he does the job or he will be killed. So Craig felt that he had no choice. Derek wasn't even supposed to be involved, but he didn't want to leave his brother to go there alone. So they went together. It was an unusually chilly September night in 1994 as the body of an 11-year-old was loaded into the back of an ambulance. He had been shot twice in the back of the head in a hit 
ordered by the leaders of the Black Disciples. What happened at night? Chaos. Despite numerous requests over the years, this is the first interview Craig Hardaway has agreed to do. Craig was only 16 years old when his mugshot was plastered on TV, arrested for the murder of 11-year-old Robert Yummy Sandifer. His brother Derek, 14 at the time, was too young for his mugshot to be released. He was convicted of driving the Gataway car. All three, Craig, Derek, and Yummy, members of the same gang, chasing money, respect, and trying to make a name for themselves. For me, it was more like identity. It was more like, okay, I want to belong to something. I want to be a part of something. It's an addiction. It's a strong addiction, and it pulls you in. The two brothers insist that they are remorseful for what they did. In 2016, Derek was granted parole. His brother will not be eligible until 2024. Craig said one message he would give to young people to not repeat the mistakes that he has made is value your life. You matter. Look in the mirror and tell yourself that you matter. Derek addressed the way his case was portrayed in the media and said that someone came up with the term super predator and basically portrayed them as evil kids who had no soul. In one interview, he said, if someone labels you a super predator, people are always going to prejudge you. Once you have that label on you, you can't escape it. It's stuck there. I want to meet the person who actually came up with that term. I'm not a predator. I was a kid who made a terrible decision and I was a bully who took on other bullies, but I did not prey on the weak. Eric earned his GED and associate's degree in prison. In 1994, there were a reported 930 murders in Chicago, one of the highest on record. At the beginning of November this year, 2021, they were a reported 678 murders. What do you think of the yummy Sandifer story and the tragic death of Siobhan Dean? Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below, like and subscribe for weekly videos, and don't forget to click the bell for more.